What's up, partner? Partner? You're my partner. You're my, what am I your partner in? You're my, my partner in life, but you're also my partner in our keto journey. So we are here at Curry Hammock State Park in Marathon, part of the Keys, and this is the perfect time and the perfect place to talk about today's coffee talk topic. We don't have any coffee though. We've got water, we've got a beach, and we've got each other. And that's all we need for today's topic. Hey, what's up family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, Two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews and we talk about various keto topics. And then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com. And that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. I don't think that we've ever taped anything where we are like surrounded by crabs and fish. Well, I saw a stingray over there. Nice. And we saw a shark over there. We did. And there's like schools of mullet like literally swimming through our feet. This never happens in our living room. We're in the water. Yeah. We're literally filming our video in the water because we are right now at Curry Hammock State Park in Marathon, Florida, which is part of the Florida Keys. Yeah, and sitting in a chair is part of my love language in the water. I need to sit in a chair in the water and that relaxes me and makes me feel really good. And while we were talking about how great that makes me feel, we thought we should talk about keto partners. Yes, because here's the thing. Keto can be stressful and keto, I don't want to say it can be difficult, but can be difficult if you don't have a partner. But here's the thing, if you don't have a partner in real life, you do have partners in us, and yeah. you have partners over on our Facebook family group. So today, we've got a really cool topic that we've been talking about for a while, because it's great to have a partner, but you have to know how to help your partner. So today, we're gonna to talk about five things that you need to do to help your keto partner be successful. Yeah, because me and Joe have done it wrong. And we have actually had, you know, fights, I would say, and- also, Disagreements. Yeah, and like periods of time where I think that the advice that we gave to one another really actually ended up discouraging the other person and stalling their progress for a while because we weren't doing these five steps. Yep, so number one, Number one is you need to find out what your partner's love language actually is. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes if you think, well, I'm a person who is motivated by someone saying like, get your butt in gear and like do this. And that person is more motivated by, you know, affirmation and encouragement and like being really kind and soft spoken to them. Right. If you use the wrong love language with that person, you're they're not going to have success and they're going to be mad at you because you're not speaking their language. Yeah. Now, I do want to say these are in no particular order because as far as I'm concerned, they're all equally important. So don't think that number one is more important than number five or anything like that. But number two, you need to make a list with your partner basically giving you permission to hold them accountable and them to hold you accountable. Yes, because whether or not you are talking like, you know, like a tough coach mm -hmm. or they do better with someone who is very soft with them, you still have to be honest and you have to be open to, you know, criticism from somebody that you trust because right. you do want to get better and you do want to have success and you know whatever that person's coaching style is as your partner they still have to tell you when you've done something wrong just like they have to cheer you when you've done something right yeah one of the first things that I do when somebody asks me if I could help them along in their keto journey is I say I need you to give me permission to hold you accountable yeah and I don't think you should like call them out on things until they actually say, I give you permission. And the reason I feel like that's important is because now when you do something and I point it out, 
and you're like, well, I don't like that. I'm like, wait a second. You gave me permission to hold you accountable. Now, if you don't want me to hold you accountable, that's completely fine. I can kind of go off and help somebody else. But if you want me to hold you accountable, I need to do it and not be worried about what I'm going to say. And here's a good example. Rachel many times has come to me and said, I don't want to have this ever again. And I'll be like, okay, does that give me permission now that if I see you eating X to call you out on it? Yeah. There have been times where Rachel said she doesn't want to have X, for example, sweetener in her coffee. Right. And then I saw her putting her sweetener in coffee and I pointed it out and she got mad at me. But I didn't ask for permission to call her out on that. So what happened? She got mad at me and rightfully so. So don't take for granted that because you're living under the same roof or you're married to the person that you know that like in your mind is your keto partner, don't take for granted that you're in a partnership until you clearly delineate what this partnership entails and what are the boundaries of this partnership. When you're discussing that, and it kind of ties into all of them, you need to discuss what your triggers are. You yeah. really need to sit down together and make a list and and decide on what is it that I struggle with? What is it that triggers me? So if you feel that like, for example, having a sweetener in your coffee is going to trigger you to start eating a lot of chocolate, you need to discuss that with your accountability partner because that person will now be able to really help you along in your journey. So you really need to kind of make an entire outline of everything that you're struggling with and also what kind of successes you're looking for. That's a really good idea because yeah, if Joe knows that um, nuts and sweeteners and let's say cheese are a trigger for me or I can start going down a slippery slope, if he knows that, then he can be on the lookout for that when I talk to him about my daily meal planning. Right. So if he doesn't know and I tell him, oh, I had nuts and cheese and sweetener in my coffee and he's just looking at it, is that keto okay? Like, is that okay on keto? He may let it slide, whereas that's usually an indicator to him that I am like starting down a dow downward sp spiral and he needs to kind of say something to me about it because it's not going to go any place good. So yeah, you have to be very vulnerable with your accountability partner and trust that they will be nice about that and they won't, you know, they won't harp on you for having a vice, but then call you on it if you are flaunting your vice. So that leads us to number three. And that is you need to schedule check-ins with one another. And number one, you have to make sure that it fits into that other person's schedule mm -hmm. because sometimes we've made the error of, hey, I want to talk about like my meal plan and chronometer right now. And he is in the middle of something. And so of course he's, you know, putting me off and I'm getting frustrated because I want to talk about this right now. But if you have scheduled check-ins like once a day, we're going to text each other at this time and you can guarantee that at this time I'm going to text you back or you are going to have a phone call or something like that or you sit down together over coffee if you live with the person that is your partner. You know, schedule those check-ins and I definitely think the part two of that is to have a weekly check-in where you're really taking an overview of what happened this week. Where did things go right? Where did things go wrong? And that's when you can have more of a conversation about any, you know, criticisms that really need to be tweaked. Yeah, I would say have a daily check-in where even if it's a simple text message or if it's like if you're living with the person or it's somebody down the street or a mother or a brother or a father or a sister, or whatever it may be, where you can just say, How's your day going? I just want to check in. Were you successful today? What is your plan today? Uh, but then having a more in-depth weekly check-in where you should be setting aside 30 minutes to an hour to talk about what were your wins, what were your losses. One of the things that my assigner for lacrosse likes to do is he says that every game, when the game is over, he wants me to sit down and make a list. Three things that I did right in my game when I was officiating and three things that I could have done better. Right. And I think that that's great to pull over into like your conversations with your partner. Like what are three things that you were really successful at this week? Or like what were three wins that you have? Maybe they're non-scale victories. And also 
what are three things that you could have done better? Like maybe not do drive-bys at the refrigerator, something like that. Now that brings us to number four because it will really help you achieve it. And that is set some goals with your partner. And that that's going to do is it's going to give you a place to go. And I think one of the things you want to do is first of all, set realistic goals. Don't be like, I want to lose 10 pounds in a week. That's not realistic. You know, your goal, if it is weight loss, should be something like, I would like to lose a half a pound to a pound a week. And you can set small goals. We don't need to set a goal of, I need to lose 100 pounds. The better way that I think to do it is set a goal of, I would like to lose eight pounds this month. And then once you reach your goal, you set another goal. Because the second you try to do anything in life, not just keto, without a goal, you're gonna fall flat on your face. You need to always have goals. So don't just set one long-term goal, set short-term goals that are going to help you get to your long-term goal. Yeah, exactly. If you have a partner that says, hey, this week I'd like to lose 10 pounds, recenter them and be like, no, we're not setting that as a goal because it's not it's realistic. Not, it's not realistic. I love you and I don't want you to get frustrated. So we're going to set a goal of a half a pound to a pound. That is what is reasonable. And we're going to set a maybe a monthly goal of one size down mm -hmm. because that is something that's possibly attainable if we work really hard. And also don't just limit yourself to scale goals. It's not just about weight. Set goals for movement. Like mm -hmm. what would you like to do? How about reading goals? What would you like to read? How would, how would you like to replace this window where you had snacking problems and like fill it with something that's more productive? Yeah. Now, before we get into number five, please do us a favor, take a moment to head down below and hit the like button on this video. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel and you hit that little bell button so that you are notified every time we upload more videos like this. So, number five. Number five, if you wanna say one of these is more important than the other, I'm gonna say it's this one, though I think they're all really important. Yeah. Number five directly relates to number four and it's what we are doing right here sitting in the water. We have a reward. Yes, and it's gotta be a joint reward. So what you wanna do is look at your goals and say, when we both hit our goal, we both have to hit our goal, we're going to do this. The biggest thing I'm gonna tell you is, do not make it a food reward. And that could be, and we are guilty of this, we are guilty of, when I lose 10 pounds, we're gonna go and get a 40 ounce steak at Texas Roadhouse. Bad idea. Yeah. Don't make it a food reward. Why? You're gonna bring it back to your old bad behavior. Instead, it could be, we're gonna go shopping. Yep. We're gonna go to the movies. We're gonna buy a movie. Um, we're gonna have a coffee date. We're gonna go on a vacation. Yeah, and you need to definitely link it to one another, basically, Joe will stay on track more if he thinks that I will be punished if he doesn't. Mm -hmm. You know, so like if you have as a joint thing, maybe I'm, you know, good at following through with stuff, but maybe he's having a challenge this month for for whatever reason, but we both have to hit our goals in order for us to get the reward. And so, I'm going to be a loving coach, but I am going to hold him accountable because I know that like my reward depends right. on him staying on track and it's the same for him. So it's it's a positive peer pressure between people who love one another, not you know a negative peer pressure with someone that's just nagging you. This yeah. is a good thing. Yeah, because if you're doing really well, but your partner is not doing well, you're going to lovingly push them along because you want your goal, right? So if Rachel just wants to be selfish and not do anything, that means I don't get my goal. So I'm going to lovingly make sure she is on the right track. It also tells that person if they don't, let's say they have a month and they don't make their goal, and that means that you don't get a reward. Mm -hmm. It shows them that you have an unconditional love for them and that you care about them and that you're willing to be patient as they get on track and you're not just gonna abandon them because a lot of times, you know, you feel abandoned if you've been a yo-yo dieter for right. a long time and you're thinking, well, people are just gonna give up on me because I failed so many times in the past. So this really gives you like the chance to show you're not gonna abandon that person. Yep. Now I do have one more as a bonus that I actually 
thought about and forgot and thought about and forgot, but <laughs> this one is actually very important. And I don't think that you are going to be successful as a partner for somebody on keto without this. And that is sharing your meal plans with the person. Oh yeah. And that refers to both what you ate Yes. And what you're going to eat. And that could be part of your daily and your weekly check-ins. So, for example, Rachel does very well if we plan what we're going to eat a minimum of a day in advance. Now, I am a very disorganized person. So, um, I can't do more than a day in advance. I can barely do a day in advance. Let's be honest. Like, yeah. Rachel will say to me, what are we eating for lunch today? And I'll be like, I don't know. Whatever happens to be in the refrigerator. I can't take that. Bad idea. It's a bad idea if you don't have a partner because it gives you more of a chance to slip up. So, make a plan. Even if it's the night before, this is what I'm going to eat. If you have chronometer, you can share like recipes back and forth. You guys can kind of like on the phone or text or in person, put it in there together because when it's written down, it's gonna be a little bit easier to stick with. Also, you can talk about what you ate in the past. And these are all things that you could be doing in your weekly or your daily talks. But having that meal plan together, I think is very, very important. I think it is too. And if you live close enough to that person, you may have one of your check-ins be meal prepping together. That's another bonus, I mean, right? Meal prep together. If you are, you know, if I'm meal prepping or if I'm a partner with somebody who's not my husband, it actually is a blessing because I can share the grocery bill mm -hmm. like for us we're meal prepping but we both have to pay the grocery bill if you and your friend are you know maybe a neighbor or partners you know I'll cook half the week and you cook half the week and that would really you know save some time yeah because I personally I mean let's face it meal prepping could be a pain in the neck because you've got to dirty your entire kitchen and it may take three or four hours it's great because the rest of the week you don't have to cook like we meal prep for this entire camping trip we made chicken salad we made chili and everything was like all scooped up and everything was put in jars and we got here and it was literally like ladle it out stick it in a bowl put really it in the nice. microwave put it on a bed of lettuce and we were good but Maybe you don't want to do all that meal prepping. So like Rachel's talking about, you could get together if you're close enough and say like you meal prep Monday, Wednesday, Friday dinner. I will meal prep Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday dinner. And then you get together and you kind of split up the food and that will really, really help. If you're not in a local area, you could meal prep, maybe do a Zoom meeting. Have, have a lot of fun, right? Set up your camera, you be meal prepping, have your accountability partner meal prepping, and you could be talking about like what your wins were for the week, all while you're cooking, and just make it a little bit more enjoyable. Yeah. Well, that is going to be our list of what you need to do to help your accountability partner on their keto journey. Now, if we missed anything, let us know down in the comments section. I'm sure there's some other things that would really help you and yeah. your partner out. Now, if you like seeing videos like this, we have several other videos on keto topics, which I'm gonna link right down here. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which I'm gonna put right over there. Whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way at the crab. Subscribe to our channel, click the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time, bye. bye.